Gold is making new highs and the options are not making new highs. The second, the bottom line, that's volatility. The top line, that's the market price. That tells you that someone is selling calls as the market rallies. And historically, when this happens, this is very near and dear to my heart. When the market makes new highs and the options do not, that's because the smartest money in this instance is selling their options out. And who's buying the options back? Well, it's the people who sold it to them. So probably the bullion banks. This is a sign of toppiness. You can make the argument that volatility is getting cheap. You might want to buy it again. That's right. I would wait for the market to sell off. Gold prices extended their decline for a second consecutive day, hitting a more than two-week low on Tuesday. This decrease came as fears of escalating tensions in the Middle East diminished, prompting investors to secure profits ahead of critical U.S. economic data scheduled for release later in the week. Market trader Vince Lancy observes an exciting trend. Despite gold reaching new highs, the options market does not confirm these peaks. Lancy suggests that this discrepancy indicates smart money may be selling options, hinting at a potential topping pattern in the market. While major central banks and other long-term investors continue to accumulate gold bullion without immediate plans to sell, shorter-term futures traders, with their high leverage, are driving this week's downturn in gold and silver prices. The recent sell-off in precious metals can be attributed to various factors, including a slight correction in prices following a significant rally across asset classes as investors seize profits and portfolio managers adjust their positions. Lancy points out that buying activity from China, including both retail investors and speculators on the Shanghai Futures Exchange, has played a significant role in driving the gold market. Furthermore, the importance of physical buying interest from central banks and Chinese retail investors suggests that this demand represents some of the highest quality in the market, as neither group is likely to return to the market, regardless of price fluctuations. This emphasizes the underlying strength of the gold market, despite the recent downturn. Come along as we explore the valuable insights provided by Vince Lancy. Don't miss out on our latest updates. Subscribe to our channel and activate notifications. Thank you for tuning in. Gold is making new highs and the options are not making new highs. The second, the bottom line, that's volatility. The top line, that's the market price. That tells you that someone is selling calls as the market rallies. And historically, when this happens, this is very near and dear to my heart. When the market makes new highs and the options do not, that's because the smartest money in this instance is selling their options out. And who's buying the options back? Well, it's the people who sold it to them. So probably the bullion banks. This is a sign of toppiness. You can make the argument that volatility is getting cheap. You might want to buy it again. That's right. I would wait for the market to sell off. That's my opinion. Next point, and this is big. Who has been driving this market? Well, there's been buying coming out of China, not just retail, not just central bank. There's been speculative buying from Shanghai that's been spilling over into the US. Futures buying, Shanghai Futures Exchange. China, for the first time, and they're very powerful when they do this, is clamping down. So call it capital controls, call it margin raises, but they are adjusting margin ratios and price limits for some contracts on futures. That's the first thing. The second thing is they're adjusting transaction fees for gold futures and other contracts. Now, not, not shown here, they've also limited the amount of position that you can have on futures as deliverable against the physical exchange. So Shanghai Gold Exchange, that's the physical exchange. It's like their spot market. That's their London market, if you want to look at it that way. And the futures exchange is their COMEX. And they're keeping them separate physically. And they're also saying you can only accumulate so many futures for delivery on physical. So they're capping it. These are big drivers. They dampen Chinese demand. Be careful. China uh, raised the requirements, uh, uh, reduced cross uh, asset trading and the market is now you know weaker okay uh, even though we had a great uh, a great week last week so I'm going to give you a little bit of a technical overview now all right this is a Bollinger band comment whenever you see these rectangles I put these rectangles here this rectangle implies this rectangle implies this will happen and it did okay? This rectangle 
is different. This rectangle comes in on the way up from here to here to this yellow line. It stayed above it all the time. And when it didn't, it went below. Now we're below it five days in a row. Okay. That's not good. That's an implication that on the daily, we're going to pull back to possibly this red line. Now, on the daily, that means and over the next five days, look for a pullback over the next five days. Now, on the weekly, same concept. The market is well above the yellow line. It should pull back to the yellow line and hold, okay? So the number, I had a number written down. The number, that, oh, there it is. This market is fine and should remain fine above 2291 If on this system. The next system I look at is below 2291. I want the market to hold 2200 for different reasons. So any pullback that holds above 2291 puts us on target for a new weekly high two weeks from now, but not this week. Bank of America analysts predict that gold could reach $3,000 per ounce by next year, attributing the precious metals rise to geopolitical risks, robust demand from central banks, and the potential for further boosts if interest rates decline later in the year. According to Vince Lancey, major financial institutions, including J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, UBS, Citibank, and Bank of America, have been increasing their price targets for gold, reflecting a trend similar to their behavior in the stock market. However, a series of disappointing inflation data has led the Federal Reserve to reconsider its plans for interest rate cuts. Chair Jerome Powell, recently indicated that it may take longer than expected to gain the confidence needed to lower rates, dampening hopes for multiple cuts in 2024 and raising concerns that there may be none at all. Despite the shift in interest rate expectations, Vince emphasizes that factors such as war debt, inflation, and the potential for rate cuts are well-known influences on the market. While the likelihood of rate cuts may have diminished, other factors, such as war debt and inflation, continue to exert pressure on gold prices. Let's get back to the interview. War, debt, inflation, and rate put, rate cut potential are all known quantities, although we know that the rate cut potential has receded recently. Second point, the bullion banks, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, UBS, Citibank, BOA, all outdid each other, raising targets very similarly to how they do on stocks they play catch up with. This is not; These are not bag holding uh, price target raises. Uh, they raised them at the end of the year. That's marketing. And then they raised them in March after the rally. And I do not believe that was bag holding. I believe that was them playing catch up with a big buyer that they are, they did not have a handle on. Okay. Uh, number three, every bullion bank, ha oh, I think I just said that, right? Every bullion bank has not only raised their end of year targets, excuse my spelling, but raised their targets again since March predicated on buying they have no control of nor heads up on if it's coming as the play as they play catch up to market forces the editor is going to be fired from this uh organization that would be me all right so here's where the cry and uncle thing happens this chart the two rectangles or squares that's december 3rd when i'm pretty sure the bank of international settlements was called upon to alleviate the rally stress. This was during the Sunday night move. This was two Fridays ago when the uh, the Iranian attack started. And when this happened, you had a market run up again in similar, smaller but similar fashion. And I'm pretty sure, almost positive, the Bank of International Settlements stepped in again. Now, the first thing is, when does the BIS or any other bullion bank step in? They step in when the market's getting ahead of itself too hard and too fast. They're kind of like a market maker that slows down volatility. Now, the more conspiratorial of us, which I can be, is they keep a lid on it and drive it down. Now, this is that evening. I'm sorry. Yeah, that evening, uh, the market rallied that day. The market rallied, opened up, gapped higher, right? Kept filled the gap, kept going, and then the selling came in in orderly fashion, keeping a lid on it, and then the market went sideways. And then we re rally and I said, okay, this is this is kind of healthy. Well, but since then, since then, right, I was like, okay, a little bit of a smackdown, but we're still okay. But since then, 
macro appetite for adding to longs has diminished evidence. The bottom graph is one I want you to look at here. CTAs are as long as they get. Doesn't mean they're going to sell, but it means they don't have an appetite for buying more right now. Second, this is CTA breakdown. Now, CTAs, again, are not driving this market right now, but they are a little bit of a canary in a coal mine. On the left-hand side, it's a little smaller than I'd like it to be. On the left-hand side, for the last month, you've seen precious metals money coming in hand over fist, right? You saw precious metals go from $26 billion to $30 billion. That's a healthy increase. But energy went from $27 billion to $36 billion. The allocations between funds are going from metals to energy. So some of the longs are selling in gold and buying in oil. It's not the end of the world, but this is how it happens. Looking ahead, what geopolitical events or economic developments do you believe could have the most significant impact on gold prices? And how do you think investors should position themselves accordingly? Share your perspective in the comments below. If the video resonates with you, join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you for being a part of our community.